All right, we're back at Capitol Casino, headed inside, uh, looking to play a little 1-3. If they happen to get a 2-5 going, maybe we'll jump into that also. So, meet you guys inside. We jump right into a 1-3 game with our usual starting stack of 500. The game looks pretty good, lots of action so far that I've seen. I haven't had too many hands for the first half hour, and then I pick up a pair of nines under the gun. I open for a raise to 15. I end up getting two callers, one from the button, who is a very active player, and the other one from the big blind, who is more conservative. So with three players in, we head to a flop, and the flop is ace ace deuce with two clubs so you know that's a pretty good flop if no one has an ace first player checks i put out a small c bet i don't have to go large here i'm either going to have it or i'm not and when they put in the call a conservative player put them on an ace or possibly a flush draw turn cards to queen of clubs they check it to me i'm just going to check it back I'm either up against a flush or trip aces. River card is another club. And they look a little upset And as they check it over to me. Here I would bluff with all my missed hands. And since I have a nine high flush, I'm going to bet also. So same price. I would bet 25 into this pot. He folds. And uh, from the way he folded, he probably had an ace. There's a $6 straddle on this hand, and there are four callers, so I complete from the big blind, and the straddler checks his option. And we see a flop of 10, 8, deuce, rainbow. I have an open ender, so I decided to leave for 15 into this $30 pot. I end up getting two callers, one from the straddler, and another one from the button. So we're going three ways to a turn card which is a beautiful six of spades. So now we're just trying to get paid. Hopefully one of them has something. I bet 40. I get quickly called by the button after the straddler folds. He only has maybe about 73, $74 left. River cards a six of diamonds. If he has a 10, he's gonna be paying me off. So I make a bet big enough to cover him. I bet $80. And he puts in his remaining chips. I show him the straight and we take this one down. So we seem to be off to a good start today. I'm in the big blind with two kings. There is a $6 straddle on this hand. First player opens to 22 and is called by the player on his direct left. And then a short stack goes all in for $41. After the small blind folds, I have to decide on how much I'm going to raise this. I decided on $100. Looking back on it, I probably should have gone a little bit bigger, maybe 120 to 140, since there's already so much money in the pot. The initial straddler folds, and it's back to the original razor. He puts in the call for the 100 more. He is a very active player, so I kind of like it when he puts in the call. And then the player to his left jams his entire stack in for $300. Now, I don't know what kind of hand he would, you know, call 22 and then jam so i'm thinking he has something like ace king ace queen ace jack something like that maybe a medium-sized pocket pair and just decide to go with it what the hell anyway after when it comes back to me i have to figure out what i want to do i decide to isolate i jam my stack in now the original razor goes into the tank he is a viewer of the vlog, and he says, oh, I want to call you. You guys have big cards. I know this is going to be good. And he, he talks about it for a while, and he ends up showing his neighbor that he had uh, pocket fives. And the guy says, well, everyone's all in. You might as well show everyone. So he ends up showing the table that he was folding pocket fives. So that's the kind of action I wanted to get. But, uh, you know... I'm pretty happy getting all in with two kings against uh, the player's range in the middle seat. And the all-in player, you know, he can have just about anything. Flop comes ace, deuce, four. Ugh. Turn cards a jack in case he had pocket jacks. River cards a queen in case he had pocket queens. 
Both all-in players show me ace-jack offsuit. So I was a big favorite, 78% favorite going in when all the chips got put in. And uh, this one gets snapped off and it's done. So after that hand, I took a little break and uh, wanted to change games. And you can't really do that when you're in the main game unless you sit out for a half hour. So I talked to some friends and I came back into the force move game. It was playing shorthanded at the time. And I just got snapped off uh, when someone called me down with bottom pair on a very wet board. And I was bluffing, of course. And I looked down at two aces. I haven't had a chance to, to top off my stack. I only have like 165 in it. I raise, I get called by two players. The seats are starting to fill up. So it looks like it's a full table, but we're still playing like five handed at the time. Flop is queen eight seven with two hearts. So it's a good flop. I shouldn't be up against two pair unless someone has like a seven eight. They could have a flush draw. The turn card is a really bad card. It's a jack of hearts. So it puts a lot of two card, you know, pair combinations up. But with aces, I'm just gonna go with it. So I jam and he snap calls me right away. I go, oh, it looks like I'm up against a flush. I roll over my aces and he called with queen eight offsuit. Anyway, this is a good time to take a little break and look at rad poker. If you haven't downloaded the app, please do so. Here's the leaderboard for the poker vlog, as you may know. Kyle Fischel's on the top. Harry at Harry B Poker is second. That's me in third. I go by Magic. And in fourth place right now is Chuck over at Happy Face Hold'em. So if you want to come play against us, see if you can get a better rating than us, check out Rad Poker. So we buy another 500 in chips. Person opens for $10 to our right. We raise to 30. And the player in the small blind has been playing pretty goofy, puts in the call, and so does the original uh, raiser. So we're going three ways to a flop with 93 in. And the flop looks pretty good. Um, it comes 10 high with one heart. So I like my top pair and I got a backdoor flush draw. First person checks. And then the player to my right puts in a very large bet. He bets 70, which is really big from his standard betting. I think he's scared of overcards. I have a feeling he has a 10. Maybe he has the same hand as I do, like ace 10. I don't think he'll bet this big with a set. And, you know, I put in the call. I, I don't believe it. And the player behind us called also. Turn card is a complete blank, three of clubs. It's checked to the person on my right again, and he, again, leads really big, $200. Now, if I didn't just get aces beat and kings beat, I might just lay this down at this point because this looks awfully strong. But my read on him is that he's a one-pair top guy, and I think he has a 10. The person behind also puts in the quick call. And now the river card comes as a six of diamonds, probably the worst card in the deck. Well, the six of clubs would have been the worst. And the first player just jams in for like 150 something dollars. It sure looks like he has a straight and the player to my right looks at his cards and flicks at him and tosses in the muck. As he did, he kind of flashed that he had a 10 of clubs in his hand. And now it's onto me and this is what looks like a pretty easy fold. But I'm looking at the player who just made the bet and he looks very uncomfortable. And so I kind of study him for a while thinking that, you know, he might just be bluffing here. And with the chips I have left, I got a bluff catcher. I got top pair with top kicker. Anyway, I put in the call. He rolls, he says good call. And then he rolls over pocket jacks. Um, so yeah, he turned his hand into a bluff, but I still couldn't beat it. So I reload again and first hand, we know I got two jacks now. So I put in the race to 20. There's plenty of action to be had. I get called in a four spots and we're gonna go four ways to a flop with 84 in. I'm still stacking my chips. Flop comes 10, nine, six with two spades. So pretty wet board, very dangerous. 
has checked me. I'm going to put in a decent sized bet here, three quarters pot. Of course, the player on the button who's just been holding over me puts in the call. And the player down in uh, the end seat also puts in the call. So with 264 in, we're going to see a turn card. I'm looking for a blank. And sure enough, it comes to a diamonds. It does put up a backdoor flush draw. But one check to, I'm going to make them pay for any kind of draw. I'm a little steamed over the last couple hands, as you can probably guess. I bet 300. And finally, I get the player on the button to actually fold a hand. It, I was like shocked that he folded. Anyway, he thinks for a bit before he does it and lets it go. He probably had maybe a pair of threes or something. Who knows? The other player tosses in a chip puts in the call and we go to a river which is the ten of diamonds which is a bad card now they have a ten they have me beat and they could have a backdoor flush I show my pair of jacks and he says I can't beat it and he tosses his cards over face up and starts reaching in his pocket to get cash for a rebuy the dealer starts scooping up his cards and says hey you got a straight he goes I do I got a straight and he shows the straight, takes his hand in his pocket, grabs the chips. Sometimes you're a big dog. Other times, you're the fire hydrant. So I buy more chips. That's just what I do. I'm in $1,900 in a 1-3 game right now. Look down at king-queen suited. I figure, this looks like another good hand to play. So here I go. I haven't won a big pot all day long. Let's see if I can win one now. Race to 30, and I get two callers. One from the button, who's an extremely active player, and the other one, the player to my right, who is also very active but competent. Um, so it's going to be interesting. He does have a short stack to player on my right, so I'm not as concerned. The player on my left has me covered, and I'm sitting here with about $500 because I just reloaded. Flop comes ace, ten, four with one diamond, two hearts. I flop a gutter with a backdoor flush draw. Well, it wouldn't check two. I'm going to go ahead and take the lead. Represent something good here. The player on the button thinks for a moment before putting in the call. I don't think he has an ace. I think he probably has maybe a ten or a flush draw. When it gets back to the player on my right, he does put in the call. He's more likely to have an ace. He took some time thinking. If he had a flush draw, he would have called a little bit quicker. Turn card's a queen of clubs, so I pick up some additional equity. I'm not just going for a gutter. I actually have a pair. I decided to go ahead and bet 100. It's probably a donkey play to lead out like this if I think a player to my right has an ace and he has a short stack. But, you know, I was wide open at the time, and I figure this is the best hand I've seen in a while. Except for the aces, the kings, the jacks, all those other cards. River card comes as a king of spades. Now the player to my right goes all in for $15. I put in the crying call, and so does the player to my left. And he turns over ace-five offsuit. So he did have an ace. I roll over my king-queen, and surprisingly... It's good. It's unbelievable that I actually have chips coming my direction after the way I've been running and enjoyed scooping in a pot. This is like the first pot where I've won over $200 all day long. So immediately following that hand, we get called to the main game. Some of the players I didn't really care for playing with have left and uh, some new players have come in. So it looks like a pretty good game. There's a couple very large stacks. So we're going to go after them. First hand we have is king nine suited. There's one early limp. We raise to 15 from the hijack. And we get uh, a bunch of callers. We end up having this go five ways uh, to a flop. And the flop comes 10, 10, nine. And it's checked over to me. I think I need to bet this for protection. Uh, I might be leading it to someone with a 10. I put in a pretty decent size C bet and we get called by the player on the button. Now he has a very wide range. He could have a 10 in this situation. 
turn card comes as an ace of diamonds. So being heads up with him, I'm just going to check it and he checks back right away. I think he has nothing. I check again and roll over my nine and he had king queen. So our stack is growing a little bit. We're up to about 1300. So we're only down 600 at this point. We switch seats to get a better angle for filming and we get king jack of hearts. Open for a raise to 15. I get a caller from the player in seat one and also a caller from the player on the button. Both of them have been fairly active. Flop comes queen, deuce, nine, two clubs. This kind of hits my range. I decided to lead at it with my normal C bet. Big stack folded and the other player puts in the call. The way he called makes me think he's on some sort of draw, either a flush draw or a straight draw. When the jack of diamonds hits, I'm thinking my uh, jack is good. If he had a jack 10, I have him out kicked. If he has a flush draw, unless he has ace jack of clubs, I have him beat. So I bet again and he calls again. River card is the seven of diamonds. I check it over to him, hoping that he will try to bet his busted flush draw or busted straight draw. And uh, he thinks for a long time before finally just rolling over ace 10 of spades. So he called me pretty light on the flop and didn't want to take a stab on the river. I'm in a low jack and I raised to 20 when one early limper calls. It's folded to the person in the cutoff who has a very large stack but has been bleeding it off for the last half hour or so. And I can tell he's getting a little frustrated. He puts in the call and so does the big blind and the limper. So four ways to a flop of queen five deuce. First two players checked me. I am not going to take a stab at this one. I check it back. I miss completely. Turn cards is six of hearts, so now I got a gutter. It's checked me again. I'm checking it back. The player in the cutoff decides to bet 40. I'm really hoping he has something really good, like maybe a set of sixes, or maybe he has like something like three, four. Wouldn't that be a dream? The player, uh, initial opener, puts in the call for the 40. I'm going to call for the 40, hoping to spike a seven. And uh, if I get lucky enough to hit it, I'm going to try to get some big bets in. River card comes as a seven. Oh, how beautiful. I go, please let him have three, four here. I check it to him. He thinks for a moment and checks it back. First time he's checked it back to hand all day long. Oh, frustrating. We get two players limping in. We look down at ace king offsuit on the button, putting a raise to 20. The big blind puts in the call. He's the one with a very large stack and has lost about five or 600 over the last, I don't know, 20 or 30 minutes of it. And uh, so he's very active. We end up going heads up to a flop of deuce, three, five rainbow. Uh, he checks it to me. I got nothing here except a gutter. I'm just gonna check this bat for, back for pot control. Turn card is a nine of hearts. And now he leads for 25. I decided to put in the call. I think I have two over cards in a gutter and I could represent the heart draw since I have the heart nut blocker. Anyway, the river card comes as perfect for diamonds. He checks quickly and I go for big sizing. I bet 60 into the pot with a four liner on board. He thinks for a moment and puts in the call. So we get paid off uh, with our 10 outer so he must have had something that is worth calling. Anyway, after this, he decided that he had enough and he started racking up to leave. So we left also. We got most of our money back, but we didn't make a full recovery. The game was good. We ran kind of bad and I didn't play my best, of course. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time. Until then, run good at the tables.